Bitcoin is stuck at a crossroads and people are wondering, can Bitcoin on the Lightning Network actually scale to serve as a worldwide payments solution? Let's dive into it. So I think that everyone watching this, especially those of you who've been watching me for a long time, we can all agree that Bitcoin is the number one store of value. It's the only place that actually protects the value that you create with your time. But what good is stored value if you cannot spend it? What good is the value, saving the value, if you can't use it in places that you want to use? And so today, I wanna to talk about Lightning. And specifically, I wanna understand, or I wanna kind of maybe just go through and discuss what the legal challenges of Lightning are, because believe it or not, this decentralized world, there is a legal challenge, but also, if it is the best tool for scaling, or if it's gonna have a stopgap until we hit the next iteration of what the payments, what the eventual payments solution is going to be on top of Bitcoin. Obviously, as everyone has pointed out, Bitcoin on the main chain, we'll call that layer one, is plagued by its best feature, proof of work. You need to spend money to incentivize the miners. You need to spend Bitcoin to incentivize the miners to protect your transaction. So enter Lightning. And Lightning Network is kind of a sub layer, we'll call it layer two, the ability to send payments back and forth without that minor fee, with very, very little fee. Comparatively, I just sent that $400 payment, it cost me less than one penny to send that payment. That's much better. As you guys may have seen, I went to Vancouver and spent time with Julian and Isa, and we actually went around Vancouver spending Bitcoin for the day. I bought coffee, I had a haircut, I had sushi. We did all these things using Bitcoin on the Lightning Network. And I'll admit, it wasn't without its flaws. It was a flawed system. It was worse than spending fiat. And I think that's probably indicative of how decentralized platforms, decentralized technologies are built. They're not built to scale. These are not companies building these protocols. We are not building the Lightning Network to actually serve 8 billion people, but we don't need to. So Lightning is one potential payment solution built on top of Bitcoin. It's kind of like opening a bar tab. So you go to the bar and you might drink a dozen beers over the course of the night, open a tab, and at the end of the night, you settle up once. You're not necessarily paying each time you get another beer. So it's, just, it's the same idea, you're opening a channel. And so Lightning has you open a channel with a counterparty and you're sort of sending back and forth these cryptographic commitments saying, I agree to send you some Bitcoin, but you don't necessarily settle each time you make a transaction. The other thing Lightning proposes is saying, okay, well, now that we have channels established, what if we interlocked a number of channels together? So if you and I have a channel and you know me and my buddy have a channel, my buddy can now pay you because you have a relationship through me. And so Lightning is this network, this overlay network that sits on top of Bitcoin and allows people to transact in a much faster and less frictional way without the need for Bitcoin's kind of slow periodic settlement. You have to first deposit Bitcoin into the channel. This is what guarantees the channel is there. You can prove and verify that there is Bitcoin backing the IOU of Lightning Network. But then the thing that I really like about this description is that it identifies that you can make transactions back and forth without actually settling. That's actually why fiat was created in the first place. If we look back to the problem that fiat solved was it made our money way more transferable, way more divisible. It is very, very difficult to go and buy eggs from your local farmer with a bar of gold. You have to like shave it off. You have to find the right weight. You have to then figure out a way to actually give that to the farmer. It's annoying and it's painful. Sound money isn't necessarily built to be a good payments money. And so the Lightning Network, this protocol, does kind of solve that problem. These channels allow for us to kind of create back and forth IOUs and then layering them into a network allows for the whole system to kind of run interoperably, all of which is verified by the Bitcoin blockchain, that layer one settlement. So very, very good. As a whole, that works fine. The Lightning Network is a very technical integration. I personally have been using Lightning in self-custody for about a year, and it is difficult. I am a decade-old Bitcoin OG, and I have a hard time fully getting a functioning Lightning channel to work 100% of the time. I say my Lightning success is probably close to like 90% right now when I use Lightning. Um, I did use self-custody to pay for jerky, that's working great. I do use self-custody to pay for things online, that works great, but the fact of the matter is, Lightning Network as it currently sits pushes people towards custodial solutions. I wanna note here, 
This is not the end all be all. I believe in a world where we do all have the ability, the proof of work to set up non-custodial lightning environments. That said, the de facto right now, when people onboard to Bitcoin through the lightning network, they are 100% doing it in a custodial way, which kind of defeats the purpose of Bitcoin. We've seen this problem with Wallet of Satoshi, the most popular lightning wallet in the world, shutting down in the USA due to regulatory pressure. As a US citizen, if you have Bitcoin sitting in Wallet of Satoshi, you've either lost those coins or they are at risk to government seizure. This is a problem. This is anti-Bitcoin. I know for myself personally, we had to make a decision at Bitcoin Well how we were going to integrate Lightning. Right now at BitcoinWell.com, you can pay your bills with Lightning, you can swap Lightning to the main chain, you can buy Lightning with e-transfer, and in the USA, coming soon, you'll be able to buy Bitcoin for the Lightning Network directly from your bank. Lightning is useful for some types of transactions, for certain transaction niches, but it's not a panacea, and it's certainly not the scaling method that's going to take Bitcoin to the promised land. It's not where, um, you know, these richly stateful transactions are going to occur. It's clear to me. I think I have a relatively good view into this stuff. It's time to explore alternatives. Bitcoin Core was lightning focused for the last five years. T hundreds of millions of dollars of VC. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but for Bitcoin VC, it's a lot. Went into building lightning infrastructure, building applications for lightning. We're investor in Lightning companies, and I don't mean to denigrate them. I think Lightning is still useful in certain contexts, undeniably. But it does, I think the time is such that we know now that these challenges are fundamental as opposed to merely contingent challenges where like, oh, we haven't invested enough resources in this. We haven't sufficiently explored it. Now we know that the challenges of Lightning are actually fundamental. In particular, the cost and difficulty of pre-funding a channel that's very unintuitive from a UX perspective. The capital and efficiency of immobilizing capital in the network in order to transact. It doesn't adhere to our intuitions as to what a payment network is like. And it's very much unlike the way that people transact in a blockchain context. We know now that these are fundamental challenges that have to do with the actual architecture of the network. They're not things that can actually really be designed away. And if you look at Lightning, like that's why probably most Lightning transactions today are custodial through custodial wallets. That's such an interesting point to look at something and kind of shift that perspective from a challenge that is there because of the way it is designed, not because some of the technical decisions that were made through the perfect design. Bitcoin, for example, is arguably a perfect design completely aligned incentives, proof of work, backing a digital token, which kind of ties it all together into the real world. We do not have to change the design. The original design from the white paper largely still holds true today. I think what we're talking about here is the fact that lightning needs to fundamentally change to be viable. Or do we just throw the whole thing out and try again? We know now that retail ordinary users are not gonna just use lightning wallets in the way that was maybe intended. We know that it's a more centralized model. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how payment systems develop. Uh, but yeah, I, I think basically we have enough data now to say it has these fundamental challenges. Let's look at something else. This is another great point as to will society actually adopt Lightning? Because we are very used to getting a credit card in the mail and being able to tap that thing the second we get it. We wanna tap, tap, tap. Lightning is not set up that way. Most Lightning wallets are advertised or spoken about as this, you know, download it and receive a hundred bucks. Download it and receive a penny worth of payments. That is not the case for the majority of self-custody Lightning wallets because of the way that channels work, because of the technical instance. Now, I am of the belief that you should not have the ability to simply download an app and receive money. You need to put the work in to make that money viable, to make that money valuable, and to show your ability to use the money that you have. The world is broken in many ways for many different reasons. One of them is because the accessibility to money is too easy and people that haven't earned the ability to spend or use money are spending and using money. 
we call that debt. In the comments, we have Crypto Lush. Hasn't Lightning Network already been proven not to be a solution for payment? It centralizes and devolves into TradFi banks with enough time and adoption. Is there anything disproving that outcome? I would argue no, this is the way. However, there is a scenario where we have multiple different stages of Lightning, where rather than going into Lightning in a fully custodial solution, you move into a federated coin like Liquid, which is a partially custodial solution. While you can maintain custody of your keys, you do have to trust that the issuing party, which is limitedly decentralized, so not fully decentralized, but limitedly decentralized, has kind of access to the issuance or the supply. We're trusting that party, that federation, that decentralized federation, we're trusting them not to screw us around. The liquid network can bridge that gap. The question is, will it bridge it? or will it just kind of push people towards more of the same problems? So, and then on the flip side, we have Bitcoin News posting this, which says Coinbase marks one year since announcing they will support Lightning Network uh, with 6.8 of all BTC sends now using layer two solution, just four and a half months after the launch. Um, Ethereum's layer two solutions took about a year to reach similar adoption. I don't think we're comparing apples to apples here, but it is a tiny number, right? 6%, 7% of all Bitcoin coming out of Coinbase are going to layer two. And this thread on X is showing us that there's some legal ramifications to that. He talks about the way Lightning works and, and how that guy described it, uh, which is if I have a channel to you and you have a channel to my friend, I can pay my friend because uh, we can route through that. It's like Lightning using uh, the multiple different routes, the entirety of the network. But the way that payment systems are described in certain jurisdictions, ahem, the USA, that would actually make me a payments provider. And under the laws, I cannot operate a payments provider without licenses. Licenses cost money. So the argument here is that the only reason Lightning Network still operates now is because it's too small to get on the radar of regulators. Once at scale, it will bring its own downfall. This is why we cannot scale. It isn't legally sound. The laws are clear. If you use your money in a payment pool, account to fund a transfer of money to another party by way of order, you are engaging in a restricted activity which will require a license. This is where I believe the political side of Bitcoin kind of comes into play. We need someone who understands the difference between TradFi and the Bitcoin protocol that can actually make decisions about this. Because right now, using words like payment grossly understates the differences between Bitcoin and fiat or the way that the Bitcoin protocol protects the Lightning channels. We've seen Lightning succeed at Zaps on Noster, micropayments through uh, the Fountain app, being able to listen to podcasts and watch videos. Is there enough of a market to justify the difficulty in setting up a Lightning channel, but also to justify the dangers of moving to a custodial environment? Because those are your two options. You have to work harder to have self-custody and have a worse experience, or you centralize Bitcoin on Lightning Network and it becomes worse and less safe for everyone. At the end of the day, personally speaking, I am a massive fan of Lightning and of Liquid. I believe that Bitcoin needs to scale. We need more people stacking Bitcoin more frequently and doing that on the blockchain is actually prohibitive at this point. But but I wanna know your thoughts. I wanna know how you interact with Bitcoin. Do you need Bitcoin to be a payments tool or are you comfortable using your credit card and then paying that off once a month at bitcoinwell.com? Are you comfortable if your Bitcoin can't really be spent or stacked in small quantities? Are we comfortable with only a layer one main chain that acts like gold in a decentralized way to preserve our value and then we use some other type of centralized environment to use for payments. Personally, that's a miss. I feel like humanity will be subject to censorship as long as our payments can be censored. But I wanna get your take. I wanna understand how you go through the world, how you see Bitcoin evolving, and most of all, how you stay sovereign. <laughs>